So the next uh, lighting uh, demo is going to be Amy, who's going to show us uh, some integration of uh, H2O uh, along with uh, Excel and Tableau, and how how we can kind of control those from or feed those from H2O. So the last talk of the day, we're going to talk about um, sort of integrations with other platforms, BI platforms that you would typically use to maybe uh, interpret the models that you've built. Uh, in particular, Tableau is a startup that's gained quite a bit of steam. Um, just to get a show of hands, who have used Tableau or heard of Tableau? Or OK, <laughs> that's a pretty good showing. Um, so in terms of interpretability, we've showed you a lot of uh, model outputs, but uh, I'm going to show you a connection in using Tableau on the front end, using HTOL's engine, um, in order to do all the computations uh, across huge amount of data sets. Uh, so the airline's data set that I showed you this morning for the web UI, I've scaled that up to about 112, 16 million rows. Um, so it's about 11 gigabytes, and we're going to run it in Tableau. So what's going to happen is we're going to load it into uh, H2O, and then uh, we're going to load the data into H2O, and from there, we connect it to uh, R, because we have the R API. Uh, and then Tableau had added, uh, the beginning of this year, they added uh, a connection to R. So we're going to utilize uh, Tableau's connection to R to use um, uh, to be able to read the REST a read the JSON feeds coming back from the REST API. Uh, so here we go. So um, just some components. That, this is available on GitHub if you want to try it yourself. But uh, some simple components that to create the connection there is to first install H2O on R, uh, so you can run all those functions. Um, then install an R serve package that will create a local R session. Um, and then from there, run a server at a uh, specific point, and then connect from Tableau to that server. And all the jobs that you run, all the computations that you run, will run on that specific server. So we're going to, here we are. So here I have a, um, right here a happy Amy Cloud sitting here. Uh, if we look at the admin page and the waterproof bars, we have basically uh, eight machines up, uh, each of them about 32 cores, a uh, total of, let's see how much actually, uh, 40 gigs on each of the machines, 320 gigs, that's quite a lot. Um, so we're gonna run everything on this these machines, so when I'm running clicking through things in Tableau, you'll see that only H2O is doing all the work. All the perf bars will sort of speed up as uh, I click through the calculation calculated fields. So if I can make this on the side here. I'll put this on the side. OK. And so this is sort of the Tableau demo. Um, all I do, give it the IP address of where H2O is launched, uh, the port, uh, the path, which is actually sitting in HDFS, because I launched this on um, Hadoop. Um, so it's going to actually do a load and import of H2O functions and Tableau functions that you need to run all these uh, calculations. It's going to do a initialization of an H2O object and parse the data set into uh, H2O. Let's see. So it's finding all the dependencies and So sort of lighting up like a Christmas tree here. Um, it's doing the import, and it's doing a parallel import straight, uh, straight from Hadoop, which is a pretty good file system for a parallel import. Let's see. And again, all of this is done on a R session. So if you want to see the output um, in R, you can actually navigate to an R Studio session that I ran our server on and see the import data into h 2 the perf bar still appears, so you know exactly what's really going on in R. Um, and 320 gigs, happy Amy Cloud, that all looks good. <laughs> so once you uh, finish importing the data, you can run some simple computation. So Tableau's good at just sort of dragging in, um, a lot of fields into uh, the worksheet so that you can maybe look at how many flights are coming out of uh, a certain airport or how many flights in an, a given month in a year. So you can do quick aggregation against, uh, this is again 112 million rows. So you're going to group by all the months um, and then count how many is in, is in each of the groups. 
And then once you've done something like that, you can run a GLM. So we are gonna run a GLM function trying to predict cancellation um, based on like unique carrier, destination, all the sort of variables I used this morning uh, using a logistic regression. So it's a classification model, but we're gonna pull the coefficients to show the uh, interpretation of something in a platform that is good at interpretability. So we're gonna run the GLM, GLM model. Just double click it. The calculated fields are just R scripts that are running in R. Let's see. So we'll go back to R session. Oops, not this one. So here you see like 3%, it starting, gives you a basic summary of all the parameters you inputted, um, the data frame that you're using, going down, and we finished the GLM model, that's done. So the longest time it actually takes um, is the converting the strings from um, R into something that you can use in Tableau. Other than that, the model building fin finishes really quickly. So now that we actually ran all these models and do the, did this aggregation, we can plot them in something that Tableau um, does really well. So here we have a graph of all the flights per month, uh, as well as the cancellations uh, for each of the months. So you can get sort of a ratio of um, the cancellation rates by month. And again, you can do that, this is uh, grouped by 12, but you can group by origin points. So you can look at specifically uh, each airport, how many are cancellations, how many total flights, and that's, you can group by like 300 groups um, in matters of seconds. So here I have variable importance shown in something like Tableau, um, which is again the coefficients, but this time I didn't take the absolute value. So uh, these are just coefficients coming back and it should give you an idea of how likely a, um, a flight is gonna be canceled based on where you're flying out of. So Newark seems to have a fairly high coefficient. Uh, Value. So that's New York, uh, White Plains, which is also in New York, um, Dallas, Boston, and I'm pretty sure San Francisco is here somewhere. But we can scale this up to like the top 10. So you see the top 10, um, DC, Philadelphia, um, and then you can create like heat maps with the same information, but maybe looking at it differently. So you group by these uh, similar um, states so, or cities. So New York, we have two uh, airports, LaGuardia or JFK. So you can look at this and say, well, if I'm flying out of uh, New York, we can maybe go to JFK instead of LaGuardia because LaGuardia has, is probably more likely to be canceled. Um, and then Tableau does like geo maps, so you can also plot all the points. So all the red points here are the ones with um, positive coefficient values saying that it's more likely to be canceled. Uh, the green are the less likely to be canceled. Um, and then if we go to the dashboard here, so, and then sort of accumulate all these graphs and visualization together um, for reports. So you can zoom out, you can filter. So this is the graph and the heat map, you can go down and have uh, the variable importance, getting the top 10 worst flight, um, top 10 worst airports, as well as like group by region. So you see the, this, um, the variance depending on which region you're actually in. So Northeast tend to have a huge spread. Um, and then looking at the map, it's sort of, you can see natural clusters tend to happen without uh, actually looking at each of the points. What you see is sort of, a huge amount of red points in the Northeast area, and then uh, maybe in Alaska, and where the weather tends to be bad, it tends to be windy, so in certain months you'll probably have huge cancellation rates. Uh, and then you also see it in areas that are, might have nice weather, but is really congested, so it tends to have a lot of people passing through at any given point in time. So you really quickly you see sort of two reasons for uh, the question of the day, which is, why there are delays and where there are delays, uh, and mostly because weather and uh, basic, uh, the popularity or just the congestion of the airpo um, airports. But yeah, that's
That's basically how you will use Tableau. Uh, Excel works something similarly. So if I close this and I open Excel, it uses H2O uh, the same way, except with Excel, you use XML instead of JSON uh, because it just makes sense in VBA. And so here, I'm gonna launch something really quickly. H2O connections established successfully. I'll import a small airlines data set because this is working on my local desktop. It returned the hex key, which is uh, the key to the data set sitting in H2O. Uh, you can generate a summary page, and so it comes back with a summary page of all the columns, what type of uh, columns they are, the mean, uh, the min, max, mean, uh, as well as cardinality, the number of NAs in each of the columns. And then you can go and predict GLM, so against cancellation rates with all the features I mentioned earlier, G, uh, binomial model, lambda set to 10 to the negative five, uh, alpha equals to 0 0.5, and we can submit the job. And on, uh, on this corner over here, you should see a little progress bar, so it hit 100%. And you can see the AUC value, which is a 0 0.77 about, show the output, and get a uh, quick view of all the coefficients uh, in a bar chart, and then you can sort by the bar chart, you can sort by all the coefficients that begins with destination, origin, and munch through, and create visualizations yourself. So that's something that you can use in Excel if that's something you're comfortable with. So basically, R works with uh, other platforms really well in the same way. So whichever sort of environment you have or setup or uh, platform you're currently using, we try to plug in easily uh, so that you don't lose other features just because you're using a new platform. So that's my talk for today. Okay. If there's any questions. Yeah, uh, do we have any questions for Amy? So we've taken a look at various ways of integrating it. Ah. What's the data that's getting sent back? I mean, I didn't, I know Tableau, but I didn't quite follow what on earth was going on there. Oh, uh, what? So, on all your seven, you have just like seven different dashboards and variable importance. Right. What does that call look like? Uh, in R. And it stays in Tableau. So if we go to something like variable importance. Uh, it's plotted using GLM variable coefficient, right? And all that is is let's go to here. This is what it looks like. So it's running a function that um, you load when you load these packages. And all it does is turn the output coming back from a GLM model with origin point uh, and the GLM model name yeah, and sure. turning it into a format that Tableau knows how to sort of parse and use. So this is sort of the R script that you use. Um, we have heard that Tableau will be uh, coming out with you know the REST that? API, which might play happy. even better with happy, happy. H2O, but you at know, the moment happy. they have uh, R connection, so that's what we right. use. And so you had functions like this set up just to load the data and everything? Sorry, and I can't hear you. You had functions like this to load the data as well? Uh, so load data is actually really simple. Because load data, you don't see the, you don't need to see the data load back. So if we go back and go to hl.init, this script, all it does is start h2o, and it's hl.init, which you guys have been doing all day. It gives you the IP address, the port, the size you want to launch it at, um, sort of basic statistics that you would use to launch a instance, and all the parameters are on the dashboard, uh, and then it does an data equals the hl.import file. So it's scripts that you're pretty much comfortable with. There are just little things that you have to tweak in order to get uh, Tableau to accept um, responses from uh, R. So that's sort of an R and Tableau thing that we have to work out. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Round of applause for Amy. Thank you.